translating an animal model into human model. And in 2013, I published a hypothesis that plasmapheresis or therapeutic plasma exchange may be the human model of parabiosis. Uh, together with the convoys, we did several studies in humans, and they are well publicized. So before we go further, I'd like to play for you a short video of what therapeutic plasma exchange is all about. Therapeutic plasma exchange, or TPE, refers to a specialized medical procedure in which blood separation technology is used to remove abnormal plasma constituents. Whole blood is removed from the patient into a blood cell separator, which utilizes centrifugal forces to separate whole blood into its individual components. Plasma, platelets, white blood cells, and red blood cells. Plasma can be removed and replaced with physiologic fluids to treat relatively uncommon but usually life-threatening diseases. So I suggested that we use 5% albumin in our study since we have done so far that. Uh, and I uh, am glad to say that successfully in terms of not creating any side effects. Albumin has a variety of properties that we have shown and others as well. It's uh, the most powerful antioxidant in the body. It has an anti-inflammatory effect and it has an immunomodulatory effect as well. Uh, we were able to show in humans with the help of the Convoys laboratory that the plasma phoresis procedure affects the entire immune system as well as uh, causing uh, DNA change as well. So we have epigenetic evidence. So we published this and in several papers. And the problem with our initial study was that we didn't have enough numbers. We, this was done in only six patients in a short period of time. And uh, it was an uncontrolled study. And all the results came from one single laboratory. So based on that, uh, we designed a double-blind placebo-controlled study in therapeutic aphoresis in individuals over 50. Uh, this is known as the lifespan study. And uh, I'm going to present some data for you here. Uh, study design involved 40 patients divided into four groups. And in group A, we used albumin plus a secret ingredient. Uh, all these patients underwent two treatments in one week and came back three months to repeat the same treatment. So all in all, they went through six treatments. In group B, also 10 patients. This group received only 5% albumin and in the same regimen, total of six treatments. Group C was the champhoresis and they had the same schedule as well and total six treatments in, in three months. In group D, uh, was one treatment per month for six months. This was actually the original schedule that we had in our uh, first studies. There are many things about the pathophysiology of aging that we still don't understand, if we are honest. To admit, there are, though, several things that we do understand, and we try to address those in our study. One unquestionably is the inflammation aging, cellular senescence, of course, and immunosenescence. So we went and uh, gathered information about biomarkers and macroparameters, but most of all, we were interested in the safety of the study. Is this safe? Are there going to be any adverse reactions in any of the groups? Fortunately, we had only one adverse reaction. It was a mild 
allergic reaction to albumin. Uh, during the pandemic, there was shortage of albumin, and uh, we had to change the, uh, the, the albumin that we used, and the new albumin caused the side effect in one of the patients. Uh, we worked uh, with the Buck Institute to perform the proteomics and the metabolomic studies. Uh, the proteomic studies were done in the laboratory of Dr. Schilling. And uh, one thing that we found is that certain proteins are decreased, so they're deregulated, de and uh, some proteins are upregulated. Uh, you can see here the blue ones are the ones that we remove, the red ones are the ones that go up. Interestingly enough, uh, we got rid of SASP, you know, the sessence associated secretory phenotype, which is the production of senescent cells. And the damage to the body, including aging, is by this SASP, which contains pro-inflammatory uh, molecules. Uh, these are the proteins that were increased. And these were the proteins that were decreased. And I'm going to highlight some of them, and I'll tell you why. Uh, you can see here the apo lipoproteins, as well as uh, serum amyloid, were decreased. The same was true for uh, the metabolomics. They are done also in the Buck Institute. And uh, as you can see here, the lipids were also removed. So removal of apolipoproteins, amyloid, and lipids is very important because, as you know, uh, people who, who have circulating apolipoproteins are 60% more prone to develop cardiovascular disease. Uh, and one thing that came as a surprise to us was a patient who, before joining the trial, had a ultrasound done at his carotid arteries. And uh, he didn't report to us that because he was afraid that we are not going to accept him in the study. And the result was, the result was moderate risk, which basically means that he had a plaque and obstruction of moderate obstruction of his carotid arteries. After we finished the study, he went and had the ultrasound repeated. Uh, as you can see here, the plaques were gone, and he, his carotids uh, were wide open. So it's, uh, it's a one single case, but it tells a story. Uh, we also performed flow cytometry analysis with a very sophisticated machine in Dr. Eric Verdant's laboratory. Uh, this is a file laser, and it can measure all kinds of uh, uh, parameters, both on the surface of the cell as well as intracellular. So we can see here that uh, the patients who underwent the real the real treatment uh, had a lot of changes happening to their peripheral blood uh, cells, and the chamfer is very little, if, if any, change at all. So uh, uh, as you, I'm sure you know that there is a hot topic these days in anti-aging medicine, and that's biologic clocks. Uh, I just came back at some of, some of you, too. Last week, there was a, a, a whole week meeting at the Buck Institute this, talking about biologic clocks, clocks and other anti-aging things. And um, I was uh, happy to see Dr. Steve Horvath, who is the godfather of the biologic clocks. He was there at the, at the meeting. And uh, we, of course, used his laboratory for some of our testing. And as you can see here, uh, you, you heard earlier, 
the clock of Grimage, which is very popular now, uh, until it is until something new comes up. Uh, it, biologic clocks are prone to evolution, so they change all the time. But Grim Age is uh, something that's popular, and as you can see here in our treatment groups, the biologic age decreases, and in the chamferesis increases. Uh, we also used true diagnostic and other another biologic clock agency. So here you can see, again, the grim age going down uh, as, as we move along with the treatments. Uh, they did another clock for us. Fino age, you see on the right side, also decreased. Uh, so as we were going through these clocks and I was evaluating the data, I came upon this thing. So through diagnostic and Harvard, and everything that comes from Harvard, you know, it's uh, very important. Uh, and I, I called Ryan Smith, the founder of True Diagnostic, and I said, Ryan, can you run our, our samples on this new clock? And he said, of course, I will. And it turned out that in our study, the hormonal uh, age was changed as well as the lung change. So this new clock is superior to the others is because it measures not only the biologic age of the person but individual organs and in our study it turns out that the lungs were younger uh, than, than the, the placebo group. So what we were able to show with these tests that we affect the plasmapheresis affects just about every aspect, physiologic aspect of aging, inflammation, cellular senescence, immunosenescence. And we, we change this old milieu, this toxic plasma that accumulates with age and create a new, healthier systemic milieu. So in addition to these biomarkers, we use macroparameters, so we, we used strength, uh, balance, speed, speed of walking. And that's uh, after that, you use a chronometer for the speed. And these are uh, the results in group A. As you can see here, the strength increases the speed increases, the, the, the line goes down because the speed increases, and then the balance increases as well, and we use a, uh, an interesting test where patients answer questions, 12 questions, and this goes to a <coughs> machine learning, and it gives you an answer. So their uh, overall health improved, through the system as well as uh, their psychological, emotional health as well. Uh, and this is the group B, another group, the same result. And this is the sham, just the opposite. Although there was a placebo effect here, there is increase in the hand grip, but it's not statistically significant. Uh, interestingly, there was a dramatic decrease in overall health and emotional health as well. And at the end of the, the day, we asked people, how do they feel? I felt incredible after the procedure. I felt I had more energy, woke up feeling less achy. Um, uh, just overall felt really good, a, a big difference. I have wrapped up my sixth treatment here at the clinic, and um, I tell you, my life has kind of changed after I started here. Um, I, I think it's after my uh, fourth treatment, I felt such uh, stamina, and my God, my strength level. For I can open jars now. 
where I couldn't before. You know, when you get older, it's really hard to open. I'd have to ask my husband. But now I can open my jar and open my vitamin pills. <laughs> if I had a, a big, big day where I had to be very active, I would be shuffling myself to the bed and I'd have to take a pain pill at night. But I haven't had anything for three months now. I haven't needed it. I, my pain is gone, actually. I had pain in my hand and my legs, and I don't know how to thank you. <laughs> so the idea is to die as young as possible, as late as possible. Uh, thank you very much.